Well, it looks like it's time for another garage update and I know you've been dying to find out what controller and inverter I got. And I'm going to share that with you today in a moment, along with some of the resources I've been using and some of the tools that I've picked up to try and make this build successful. But first, I think I should do a little tiny bit of housekeeping. That first video and the second one caused a little bit of angst, so I want to clarify something. You were all lovely with your concerns, and since I don't want to cause you all torment, I do have a little certificate that actually says I am a certified hybrid mechanic. So safely playing with batteries and motors isn't totally outside my knowledge base, it's something I've actually had some training on, so, you know, hopefully that's reassuring. Uh, I've also played with electronics since I was a kid. Indeed, Teen Me had a 1971 Ferguson Color Star Telly that I got from a dump, and with some help from my dad we got that going. And I actually got pretty good at stripping it down, repairing it, fault finding, using the TV service manuals from the library. I actually probably spent as much time staring at the back of that TV as the front, and I used that TV into the 2000s when unfortunately the flyback transformer spectacularly let out its magic smoke, and I couldn't come up with anything to repair it with. So, playing with high voltage electronics is not something that concerns me, although it is obviously something that I do with caution, because I don't want to die. Also, I'll try not to terrify you all so much with my axle stands. Now the car can actually move around in the garage, um, and the garage floor is actually cleared, it should be a bit easier anyway. Oh, and today, um, while we're doing housekeeping, I'm going to be running through some stuff that I've bought. We have not been sponsored by any of these companies, and I am not endorsing any particular brand or product. Most of these, it was just the best price I could find anyway. Okay, so a little bit of housekeeping out of the way. Let's get back to the controller and inverter. Yes. So if you've been following this project from the beginning, you'll know I'm a big fan of open source hardware. I've been following the Open Inverter project for a while, and while I was originally planning to use the uh, inverter for a or from a Toyota Prius, uh, I have changed my mind a little bit. But so there's a lot of advantages to using Toyota Prius inverters. They're cheap, they're really plentiful, they can be extremely versatile, and can potentially act as the inverter, the controller and they're working on getting the charger working as well. But the one problem is it's big. It is a chunky beast to try and cram into the miner's felt little frame. Remember the miner is basically the size of a modern Fiat 500e? You can more or less fit the entire miner into the Prius engine bay. But it turns out there is a similar alternative. There's the inverter used in the Prius C and the Aris. That is a smaller version of the same inverter as the Prius. There are some important differences though, the most important of which is that for battery charging, some of the capacitors on the charging side of the circuitry are rated at 300 volts. That's not ideal, considering that that's right in the region where I want to run both the pack and the motor. So that means that we have a couple of steps that we need to take to get this all working before it goes in the car. First of which is to take this thing apart. We need to switch out the main controller for the open inverter board. That board needs to be built up a bit. It's mainly assembled when it arrives, but there are some parts that need soldering on. It'll also need programming. We'll come back to that in a bit. So next, while the inverter is in bits, I'm going to have to find the three underrated capacitors and replace them. That shouldn't be too hard, someone has posted a picture of them and where they are, but I don't have a spec for them, so until it's in pieces I don't know what spec the capacitors need to be to order replacements, which is going to slow me down a little. Then, while it's on the bench I need to get it connected with a power supply, see if it works or explodes, uh, and I know of those two options which one I'd like it to be, um, and then hopefully I can start working on getting it connected up. So I haven't really had a chance to look at this properly yet, but like I say, I've bought some small things to help me get going with the project. So playing with surface mount components, it does make me a little unhappy. I grew up on through hole and surface mount is a bit horrifying, mainly because my eyes struggle to focus at that kind of a distance. So I got this. It's a magnifying lamp. 
Why did I not get one of these before? I can actually see the components. I have also upgraded my solder. See, all of my solder is this one mil stuff, more or less. It's like 0.8. I recently did some stuff with um, through hole and that was fine, but then I did some stuff with some surface mount kit and I realized that my solder was actually bigger than both the pads and the pins. So I got myself some super fine solder, which is much nicer. And because I'm someone who watches and reads everything beforehand, I got some flux, which is in this nice little syringe as recommended by the most awesome Damien Maguire in the video for the open invert inverter Toyota board assembly. I also had this super fancy uh, temperature controlled solder rework station already uh, because when I came to the US my little inherited Antex iron didn't work on the feeble American voltage so I picked up a newer temperature controlled one and figured a clone of the 858 would do and I must admit, I took the opportunity of doing this project to get a little USB powered soldering iron that's a bit more practical to use in the car if I have to do any soldering in place. Um, so that's dead nice. Um, I also, and this isn't super necessary, is I, I, I did pick up a scope. It's a little tiny portable 120 megahertz scope. I wanted something a bit more portable and a bit more convenient to use than my uh, somewhat ancient HP bench scope, which isn't out, it's actually still in storage. Um, so I bought this because I thought that might be handy for this and if not for other jobs. Um, particularly though if I get problems following assembly it'll be useful if I get the resolver problem that I talked about in the last video. I also picked up some tweezers. I uh, learned this because I was trying to repair a Dyson fan which came with all surface mount components um, and sadly although it is still very dead I did work out that positioning surface mount components without tweezers is a nightmare. I mean with the lamp I can see what a mess I've made but now I could actually put them in the right place in the first place which probably a good idea. I also um, a little pile here picked up one of these this is a programmer for uh, the ST microcontroller, which does all the grunt work on the open inverter board. So I've never programmed um, an ST micro program, uh, programmable chip, so that should be interesting. I've programmed EEPROMs back in the 80s, um, but that was on a BBC micro, so this is a bit different. Um, so that's what we're at right now. I have a motor, I have a controller, I have an inverter, and hopefully, um, Hopefully this will work as a charger as well. I do need to order the bits to make the two of them talk. And so I'll be ordering those pretty soon. We might then have a functional powertrain. Well, sort of. I still need to order a custom backplate to make the motor onto the box. And I also need a custom mount for the flywheel onto the motor. I've done a little bit of design around that because I think I can make that and then have it 3D printed in metal. Maybe. I'm a little bit concerned about, you know, 8,500 RPM and mm, 3D printed parts, but eh, we'll see. I'm going to talk to an engineering shop about that anyway, because there are some other things that might need doing, and I need to uh, make sure that that flywheel mounts correctly and, and gets um, lightened, because you need a lightened flywheel if you're going to put it on a, an electric motor, ideally. Um, and then there's mounts for the engine bay and you know what we should probably also have a battery. Battery also handy. So where am I getting all these pieces from? Well there's a few resources that I check and I have to thank a viewer for one of them, the one that paid off the most for the inverter. Um, the motor was an eBay purchase. They were, that, that just happened to be that that company was willing to include the motor cable and the price was pretty much the same as the ones from scrap dealers and the scrap dealers wanted extra for shipping, so ended up being eBay. I also checked Craigslist as well, but the prices were way higher than anywhere else. Um, the main resource that I really want to thank Altma for is uh, carparts.com. And uh, like I said, they don't sponsor us, I've just found them really handy. So I've seen some bits going past which they, 
that I haven't seen elsewhere, um, lots of stripped out parts from electric vehicles, so that's really useful for a project like this. And the prices have been about a third of what I was seeing on eBay. In fact, my inverter here was under $70 delivered, came with a one year warranty, which I'm going to spectacularly void, and it arrived shipped to my door. Did get damaged a little bit in shipping, there's a bit of metal that got chipped off, but I'm really not worried. I'm going to be making custom mounts anyway, so I just won't mount it there. For components and equipment, I've used DigiKey and Mouser, which are two of the ones I generally use, and of course my favourite source for cheap Chinese things like the, uh, the oscilloscope. That came from AliExpress. Your mileage may vary on the quality of the items you get. I've also found a bunch of EV conversion forums really handy, although I lurk most of the time on the Open Inverter forum. So those are some of the sources and resources I've been using. If you've got great links, please drop them in below. I'd love to hear from you. Um, in the next update, hopefully we'll get this all connected together and the motor turning. That's probably going to be a little while away, but fingers crossed. But that's it. That's it for today. As always, thanks to the folks on my right for being our $15 to $49 a month patrons. Special thanks to our $50 a month patrons, Anonymous Freak, Regine Fellows, Gordon C, Paul Conway, Laura Sanborn, Anthony Coates, Denny Hyde, Sean Ueda, and Tesla in the Gong. And our deepest gratitude to our $100 a month Patreon supporters. That's John Lyons, Marcel Ward, Reggie Watts, JP Fagerback, Will Graylin, and Ian. If you'd like to join the ranks of wonderful supporters, you'll find links below to Patreon, Bitcoin, and Ko-fi. Chat with the team and TE fans over at Discord, and if you'd like to buy some TE swag, just head on over to our Redbubble store. Thanks for joining me, and as always, keep evolving! <laughs>